In this lecture, we are going to learn about and understand what is pass by value and pass by reference while passing arguments to a function. Now, we learned about value type and reference type in our previous lectures and we learned how they work. And to understand the concept of pass by value and pass by reference, it's important to have a good understanding of what is value type and reference type. So if you have not watched previous lectures on value type and reference type, then I will highly recommend you to go and watch those lectures first before coming to this lecture. So let's understand what do we mean by pass by value and pass by reference while passing an argument to a function. And to understand that, here I have created a very simple function called check-in, which is taking two parameters, flight num and passenger. So this flight num is basically flight number. So these are the two parameters which we need to pass when we are going to call this check-in function. So when we are calling this check-in function, there we are passing this flight, this variable flight. And what does this variable store? It is storing a string value. Okay. And for this passenger parameter, we are passing this person. And what is this person storing? It is storing an object. So here what is happening is when we are passing this flight to this flight num parameter, what does this flight storing? It is storing a string value and string value are value type. So here we are passing a value to this flight num parameter. From this flight variable, the value will be copied from this flight variable to this flight num parameter. And what value will be copied? This string value will be copied from flight variable to flight num variable. Then when we are passing this person object to this passenger parameter, this person, it is storing an object and objects are of reference type. So here, this person variable is going to store a reference, a memory address, right? And that memory address will be copied to this passenger parameter that reference will be copied from this person object to this passenger parameter so here we are passing a reference we are not passing a value directly instead we are passing a reference from this person object to this passenger parameter now what we are doing inside this check-in function first of all when we are entering this function first we are changing the flight number so let's say for some reason, the flight number has changed, the flight has changed and the passenger has to board some other flight. So we are changing that flight number to that new flight number. And this is also a string value. Okay. When we call this function at that time, this flight num parameter was storing this string value, but now it is going to store this string value. Then here we are also changing the passenger name. So currently, when we are passing this person object, there the name is John. But inside this function, we are changing the name and to that we are appending Mr. So now the name will be Mr. John. And then inside this if statement, we are checking if the passport number is this one. So here we have hard coded it. Okay, so if the passport is this, then we are going to log this message. Hello, passenger name. You are checked in for the flight and then we are going to display the value of flight number. So if I save the changes, you can see that in the result it says hello Mr. John. So passenger dot name is John. You are checked in for flight BNB triple nine. So flight num here is BNB triple nine. So that has been logged here. So the output is correct. Now what I will do is let me go ahead and let me log this flight variable. If I save the changes, you will see that for the flight variable, it is logging BNB 289. So basically this value which we assigned to this flight variable and it is not logging the value which we have changed flight num to. So when this function was called, the value stored in this flight variable was assigned to this flight num parameter. And then inside that flight num parameter, we changed its value. We assigned a new value to it. But that change did not affect it this flight variable because these are value types so in case of a value type when you change the value like we are doing here it is not going to affect the value of the variable from where the value was initially copied okay so changing this flight num parameter did not affected the value of this flight variable but 
if I go ahead and if I log the person object and if I save the changes you will see for the person object the name has changed to Mr. John but we change the name on the passenger on this passenger parameter but here when we change the name since for the passenger parameter we are going to receive a reference so in that case this passenger parameter and this person variable both are going to point to the same object in the memory so when we have changed passenger dot name that change is also reflecting in this person object let's try to understand it diagrammatically so that it will be easier for you to understand so here we have the same code now when we are creating this flight variable and to this we are assigning a string value string value is primitive type and we have learned that primitive types are value types and value types get stored in the stack memory so here this value will be created somewhere in the stack memory and this flight variable an identifier called flight will be created which will point to that memory address so in this flight variable we are storing this string value then we are also creating this identifier person and to that we are assigning an object and objects are of reference type and reference types are created in the heap memory so this object it will be created somewhere in the heap memory okay and there it will be stored and for this memory address a reference will be created in the stack memory which will point to this heap memory address and this person variable here it will point to that stack memory which is storing that reference so what is this person storing it is storing a reference to a heap memory where that object is created now after that this function will be created but its parameters and the local variables will not get created immediately in the memory it will only get created when this function will be called okay and at this line we are calling that function so when this function will be called first of all an identifier called flight num will be created and where it will be created it will be created in the stack memory because we have learned the identifiers points to a stack memory right and to this flight num what are we assigning we are assigning the value stored in this flight variable and this flight variable is storing a string value which is of value type so inside this flight num this value will be copied so basically an identifier called flight num will be created which will point to that value so both flight and flight num variable are pointing to the same value in the stack memory okay then this passenger identifier will also get created and to this passenger identifier we are copying the reference from this person object this person object it is storing a reference it is storing a memory address so this memory address will be copied to this passenger parameter that means the passenger identifier will also point to this memory address it will also store the same reference which this person object is storing so both of them are storing same reference now this function will be executed and in the first line what we are doing we are changing the value of flight num from bnb 289 to bnb 999 and again to this we are assigning a string value and since string value is value type again this value will be created in the stack memory and now the flight num parameter it will point to that new memory address where that string value is stored so now this flight num parameter is storing this string value and this flight variable is storing this string value and that's why when we are logging flight num it is logging bnb triple nine and when we are logging flight it is logging bnb 289 so here we change the value of flight num parameter but it did not affected this flight variable it did not change the value of this flight variable and now you understand why but when we are changing the name property of this passenger object this passenger object it is basically pointing to this object so it is storing a reference to this object so when we are changing the name property on that passenger it is going to change the name here so now the name will change to mr john right 
and currently both person object and the passenger both are pointing to same object both have a reference to the same object in the heap memory and that's why when we change the name property on this passenger parameter on this passenger object that change is also reflecting in this person object okay so basically here also the concept of value type and reference type is being followed i hope you understood this concept so here when we are calling this check in function for this flight num parameter we are passing a value because this flight variable is storing a value so here the value will be copied from this flight variable to this flight num parameter and this is called as pass by value because here we are passing a value to this flight num parameter but in case of passenger to this we are assigning an object so this person it is an object so in this person variable we are storing a reference to this object which will be created in the heap memory this person here it is storing a memory address a reference so that reference will be copied from this person object to this passenger parameter here reference is getting copied from person to passenger and this is called as pass by reference because here we are passing a reference from person object to this passenger parameter so this flight num is storing a value and this passenger is storing a reference so i hope this point is clear and this is called as pass by value and pass by reference this is all i wanted to cover in this lecture and this is all from this section also now in the next section we are going to learn how javascript works internally we are going to learn how browser acts as a runtime environment for executing javascript code and we are going to understand its architecture when we use it for executing our javascript code and we will also learn how javascript code gets executed by the browser what are the different steps involved how the variables are created and initialized how parameters are created and initialized how functions get executed and many more things so this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day